Hey guys, Bar with Shy Battery Systems. Today we're gonna show you how to install a quart um, into a pint. Okay, so um, this is the quart battery that we're gonna be installing today. We're essentially trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. This is a really custom size battery and it's designed to look this way. This is just the configuration we had to come up with to make sure that it fits without having to modify the rest of the enclosure. You can go ahead and have a look at how ours looks on the table here. So one's higher, one's lower. Um, and then the same on the side, there is some um, I guess lumpiness to the size of the battery. And then you have one cell extruding from the side there. I promise it will fit. Uh, the tools you're gonna need are a pair of scissors, some flush snips or any sort of cutting pliers, a Phillips screwdriver. You're gonna need an impact drill. This makes removing the axle nuts a lot easier. And a regular drill also helps with the job. And then the bits you're gonna need are a T8, a T30 bit, a T20 bit, and a security 20 IPR bit. All right, let's get to it. So you wanna determine which side of the pint is the um, battery end. And to do that, uh, you just put it on the counter. The side that drops down is the battery end. You can go ahead and grab your T20 bit and we'll start um, removing some of these screws. So we're gonna take off the two screws that hold the foot pad on. We're also gonna take the fender delete off by removing these four screws in the corners. And to make sure that we keep track of which screws we're using, I like to keep the screws on the part that they came off of. We'll just put those four loose screws back in the, in the part and then put them off to the side. And we're gonna flip it upside down and take one, two, three, four screws out. So these two screws came off the front, so we're gonna put them right back on the front and put it all the way off to the side. Now we can take the rear bumper off. And to do that, you just pull out the two long screws after you unscrew them, and then just pull the part straight back. And now you should be left with something like this. What we're gonna do next is remove one, two, three, four screws, and that's using the same bit. Once those are off, the next thing we're gonna do is flip the board over to the wire side where the battery box has a wire coming out of it and going all the way to the front box. Well, this is the side we're gonna work on. So next we're gonna take a T30 bit and you're gonna test it. It's gonna fit right in the two bolts there. And you're gonna wanna use an impact driver for this. Throw it in reverse and those come right out. So we'll take those out. And then you'll notice now you kind of have some play there, which is exactly what we want. On that same side, you'll notice there's a, a wire cover with two Phillips screws. We're gonna wanna take a Phillips screwdriver and remove those. Keeping the screws intact, we'll put that off to the side. And now what you should be left with is one side, which is the wire side. That's really easy to just kind of flex out of the way and then you can pull your housing out really easily. So there's no need to disassemble the whole front of the board. We're just gonna work on it in this state and it'll be a lot easier to reassemble. So we'll put it down just like so. Now don't forget these four screws that we took out belong to this box. These are the only screws that we're not gonna put back in place. So this is where we're at now. We're gonna wanna flip the enclosure upside down and you need a special 20 IPR security bit to be able to remove the enclosure screws. So we'll take that and attach it to a drill. And we'll back all these out. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is take a T8 bit or screwdriver and you're gonna back out these two screws here. You wanna be really careful with it to make sure that they don't fall onto the BMS and short anything out. So just keep them in your hand and then we can take the whole part, put the screws back on it and throw it over there. The way you're going to want to unplug this is unplug the balance cable first. So it's going to be this large connector, the white connector. We're going to unplug that by pushing back on the clip and just freeing that. And then we can unplug the main battery connector afterwards. And we do that by just carefully pulling it backwards. And now our BMS is free. 
and so is our battery. So we can take the stock battery and just put it off to the side. We will not be putting it back in. Okay, so we're gonna modify the BMS cover and what we're gonna do for that is we'll take flush snips or scissors or whatever you might have and we're gonna cut the lower um, extrusion of this completely off. So I'm gonna make that cut with flush snips and then the long cut I'll make with scissors. And when you're done, it should look something like that. And you can kind of tweak this as much as you need. It's just enough to get the wires to sit nicely. Now what we can do is take our quart and it should just fit right in the place of the old battery. Okay, so you're just gonna wanna make sure it's put, the battery's pushed nice and flush in place. You're gonna take your power connector, make sure that red on the power connector goes all the way across to the red on the connector that's already installed. And we can go ahead and plug that in. After we plug the power connector in, we'll plug in the large connector there, okay? So what I'm looking for, I wanna make sure that all these wires here are not like crossing in any way or like underneath the battery or pinched under the BMS or anything like that. Um, just to make sure that long-term they don't fail. And this is a good example of how everything should look once it's installed. What we'll do next is we'll take the BMS panel and we're gonna cover the BMS just like it was originally. And we'll take our two screws and our T8 screwdriver and get those back in place. Okay, so once your BMS panel is installed, it's gonna look something like this. Now, our O-ring was pre-cut from the factory, which I've actually never seen before, but it can happen. Um, so ours is not a continuous loop. So we're gonna need to add some adhesive there some silicone just to make sure that it's watertight. Um, and the reason that they might have done that is because the O-ring might have been a little bit too long if it was already previously installed. We actually might have to do the same thing on this side here and you might experience the same thing yourself. So notice if you this O-ring isn't gonna wanna sit in place, you have a good amount of length left. So you just take something to snip them and then let it lay flat. And then you're just gonna cut off that same length um, that's kind of overlapping. And that's just gonna make your install so much easier. But you cannot forget to add uh, a nice little dab of silicone where the two ends meet. We're gonna have to do one there. We're gonna have to do one here where the factory cut it. It is that easy. Now we can take our cover. We're gonna make sure we line it up really nicely. We're gonna hold it in place. You're just gonna start adding the screws back. So I like to do opposing sides. So we're gonna do this side here. Make sure that it holds everything on the right side in place. And then we're gonna flip it around and do the same to the opposite side. And I don't, I don't put the screw all the way in. That's another part of it. What might happen at this stage is that the O-ring might try to pop out of the channel it's supposed to sit in, and then it won't allow your enclosure to close all of the way. So you have to be really mindful and just take your time with the step. If you need to take it all apart and then cut a little bit more out of the O-ring and add some more silicone, that's definitely something that you should do because this is gonna be the difference between whether your board is waterproof or not. And then you just do a once over, make sure that you have no gap between the plastic and the aluminum. That tells me that the O-ring's in place. Okay, so at this stage, you actually should be able to power the board on just to make sure that everything was done properly. So that's what we're gonna do. We wanna put the enclosure in a way where it's not putting much strain on the, on the wire. And you can tell, you'll turn it one way, it'll fight you. If you turn it the other way, it wants to be a little bit more relaxed. We don't wanna damage the harness in any way. And then we can just turn the board on. And at this point you can open your app to see if there's any error codes, or you can just kind of engage it with your hand on both sensors and see that everything's working perfectly. Now we can turn it back off and we'll start the reassembly stage now. So we're gonna take this enclosure and push it into the far channel. The far channel is the one that doesn't have the wiring harness on it. We're gonna to try to put it all the way into the channel as much as we can. And then without pinching our fingers, we're gonna pull the rail that we freed over the enclosure. And then you're gonna look just like that. Now would be a good time to reinsert these four screws. And those are the only screws that we left unins uh, uninstalled into a component. So they should be easy to find. We don't wanna over torque this. I have this on the second to lowest torque setting right now. So once our enclosure is in place, 
now would be a good time to reinstall the axle nuts. So we're gonna take our two bolts. We're gonna thread them both individually first because if they're, if you put one in and it's unaligned, it's gonna be really hard to get the second one in. You're gonna have to back it out. We're gonna tighten these down a good amount until the impact driver stops spinning. Some thread lock on these also is a good idea, but enough torque usually does the trick. We're gonna move on to the rear bumper. So since we left all of our screws in the place that they go, our reassembly is really simple. We'll pop those two long screws out and we can reinsert our rear bumper like so, and then put those two screws back in. Now that we have the bumper installed and all the hardware is going through it, we don't wanna flip the board all the way upside down or else all the screws will fall out. Um, we can take our foot pad with the screws also still installed and line it up. And I'll go back and tighten up the foot pad screws. Beautiful. If you remember, we removed the wire guard here. So we're gonna wanna make sure that goes back in place. And if you put your harness back exactly the way it came off, it'll still kind of have that memory and it should go in pretty easily. But that part can take a good amount of force to push in place. We're gonna take a Phillips screwdriver and just tighten those two screws down. Perfect. Our last step is installing the fender delete. This is pretty easy to find where it goes. There'll be a notch here, which lights up with the um, battery indicator on the front foot peg. And it'll kind of clip in place on the sides. You'll feel it insert. And the last thing to do is just make sure that everything functions properly. We'll turn it on. And at this point, you should be able to go for a ride and everything operates well.